As pro photographers, our mission is to control the way people view the frames we produce. This can be in a number of ways. For example, one solution can be controlling the direction of light, but another route is to control the depth of field in the frame to make sure the subject is sharp and other areas of the photo are blurred. This is to focus attention on your subject and make them more prominent in the order of the frame. Of course, sometimes you won't have that fast aperture lens to hand, and this is when the powers of Affinity Photo 2 come into play. Using the software's masking and blur tool options, photographers can precisely replicate the shallow depth of field effect in any image, giving a natural defocused look to the background while keeping your subject super sharp. Along with making the subject stand out, this technique can also help to hide elements that you don't want to be distracting from the scene. Better still, this technique is simple to accomplish and doesn't even take that long, so let's see how it comes together. When you open your image in Affinity Photo 2, you'll be in the photo persona by default. Our first job is to duplicate the background layer and the easiest way of doing this is to hit Command and J or Apple and J if you're using a Mac. This new duplicated layer will appear in your layers panel and will be automatically selected ready for you to work on. There are multiple ways to make a selection, but in this tutorial we're going to select the Selection Brush tool from the toolbar on the left hand side of the interface and the keyboard shortcut for this is W. Now you can actually make this brush bigger or smaller using the square bracket keys. We're going to start by drawing over the selection area that we want to include, which is this driver here in the classic car. Take your time with this, and if you need to, you can zoom in. Now, we need to fix areas that uh, haven't worked out quite as we wanted to, and of course, these are the areas that you don't want to be included in the selection. And all you need to do is to hold Alt, and draw these areas out. So we'll just change the size of the brush here, just get rid of this ear pillar, because we don't want that in our selection. And then we'll just zoom in, and just get these last tiny bits, just to make sure we've got the selection as we want it. And I think I'll just change the brush as well and include this little chin strap area. There we go. Once you've made your selection, head to the top of the interface and click on the Refine option. A red overlay will appear and this will help you see exactly which areas have or have not been selected. And now you can paint over any problem areas, and in our case it's this leg area here. So I'm just going to change the size of the brush, paint over, and Affinity Photo 2 will correct these areas. Once you're happy with your selection, you can head to the dialog box and click apply. Our next job is to head to the layers panel and click on the mask option and this is identified by a circle within a square. And you'll see our mask has been created and you can click down and get a better view of that thumbnail. So we're going to deselect our selection by hitting command and D or Apple and D if you're on a Mac. And then we're going to jump down and select our background layer which is at the bottom of the stack. We're then going to select the filters option from the layers panel and this is identified by an egg timer icon. And we're going to select the first one, which is Gaussian Blur. Now here's the radius slider, and we're going to drag this to the right. And this will start to blur the background. Click on the Preserve Alpha box to protect the corners from any distortion. And you can really start to drag out the slider to make the effect stronger. Don't take it too far, or you'll see a halo effect start to appear. But that has certainly changed the look of my image. In fact, let's turn the mask on and off, and you can see just how much it's changed, really focusing attention on the subject. So now it's time to add any final touches, and this could be an adjustment layer, for example. So I'm going to click on the adjustments icon, create a curves adjustment. Now, as you can see, it's affecting the whole image. So I want to drag it just to my top layer, so it only affects the subject and not the background. There we go, all done. All you need to do now is click on File, Export, and you can save the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. Have fun experimenting with blurring in your images, and I'll see you later.